Hi, thank you for tuning in once again to Mama Sanity. I hope y'all are having a great week so far. Um, I really hope that you turned tuned in to, um, I had posted something on Facebook yesterday about um, anxiety and Stephen Furnick. Um, he has been such an inspiration to me. So I really hope that y'all watched his video and maybe subscribe to his channel. It's Elevation Church. It is so wonderful. It's been giving me a lot of, lot of inspiration these days um, to help me get through life. Um, the story I want to share with you is called The Ugly Cat, and it is kind of long, so please bear with me, and then I'm going to end with tying it into kind of why I'm sharing this story with you. So let's get started. Ugly Cat. Everyone in the apartment complex I lived in knew who Ugly was, and he was the resident Tomcat. Ugly loved three things in this world, fighting, eating garbage, and shall we say, love. The combination of these things combined with the life spent outside had their effect on Ugly. To start with, he had only one eye, and where the other eye has been was a gaping hole. He was also missing his ear on the same side. His left foot had appeared to have been badly broken at one time, and it healed out of an unnatural angle and making him look like he was always turning the corner. His tail was long, since had been lost, leaving only the smallest stub which he would have constantly jerked and twitched. Ugly would have been a dark gray tabby striped cat except for the sores covering his head, neck, and even his shoulders with thick yellow scabs. Every time someone saw Ugly, it was the same reaction. That is one ugly cat. The children were warned not to touch him and the adults threw rocks and hosed him down, squirted them when he tried to get in their homes or shut his paws in the door when he would not leave. Ugly always had the same reaction. If you turned the hose on him, he would just stand there getting soaked until you would give up and quit. If you threw things at him, he would curl his lanky body around the feet in forgiveness. Whenever he spied children, he would come running and meowing frantically and bump his head against their hands, begging for their love. If you ever picked him up, he would begin sucking on your shirt, earrings, or whatever he could find. One day, Ugly shared his love with the neighbor's huskies. They did not respond kindly, and Ugly was badly mauled. From my apartment, I could hear his screams, and I tried to rush to his aid. By the time I got to where he was lying, it was apparent Ugly's life was almost to an end. Ugly laid in a wet circle with his back legs and tower over back twisted grossly out of shape, a ga gasping tear in his white stripe of his fur that ran down his front. As I picked him up and tried to calm him, I could hear him whiz wheezing and gasping and I could feel him struggling. I must be hurting him, I thought terribly. I felt that familiar tugging and sucking on my ear. Ugly, in so much pain, suffering, and obviously dying, was trying to suck on my ear. I pulled close, he pulled closer to me, and he bumped the palm of my hand with his head. Then he turned, the one golden eye toward me, and I could hear the distant sound of purring. Even in his greatest pain that ugly battled, that scared cat was asking only for a little bit of perf affection, perhaps some compassion. At that moment, I thought Ugly was the most beautiful, loving creature I had ever seen. Not, never once did he try to bite or scratch me or even try to get away from me or struggle in any way. Ugly just looked at me completely trusting in me to relieve his pain. Ugly died in my arms before I could get inside but I sat and held him for a long time afterwards, thinking about how scared and deformed little Stray could be. So, and it altered in my opinion about what it means to have true pureness of spirit, to love so totally and so truly. Ugly taught me more about giving and compassion than a thousand books, lectures, or talk shows ever could, and for that I will always be thankful. He had been scared on the outside, but I was scared on the inside. I was scarred on the in and out for a long time, and for me to move on and totally truly love was hard. To give my total trust and compassion to those I care for, many people want to be richer, more successful, well-liked, 
more beautiful, but I will always try to be like ugly. I wanted to share that with y'all today because I recently met a family and it's kind of ties into the story of the family. They look rough around the edges. The dad looks rough around the edges. Um, they all do. They've, they've had a really hard time. Okay. The dad is raising the two kids by himself. The mom didn't want anything to do with the kids, um, left a long time ago. And the dad is, um, trying to do all this on his own. He's had um, a really hard time. He's gone through a lot of rough and bad things. And when you first look at this family or see the dad, you might think, I don't know if I would trust him or you know something to that effect. You're judging a book by its cover. Yes, he's had a rough past. Yes, he looks a little rough because of his past. However, in getting to know him and his family, he is so nice, and his daughter is just sweet, loving, and very respectful beyond means, okay? And it really taught me a lot. It taught me, no matter what, it, it showed me that no matter how hard things are in my life, it could always be a lot worse. And in meeting this family, my heart broke for them because they are really kind of bad off right now and I just I it, it broke my heart and I wanted I asked God you know God to show me how I can help this family in any sort of way you know anything that I can do and it may be nothing big it may be just be something tiny that I can do but at least that's something that I can do to help this family and love this family you know and having her come over and and be with us and spend the night and you know just have that you know mother figure for the day and just I gave her so many hugs and love and it was just the smile on her face was just unbelievable and like in the story the ugly cat you know everybody saw this ugly scarred up beat up torn up cat and they wanted nothing to do with it and all the time the cat just wanted love and compassion and how many people are around us or come to us or do do we walk past that do look rough on the edges and like mm, no I don't think I want to associate with them I don't want the drama or I don't have the time or I don't want to deal with it but all they are looking for is just a friend or love and compassion and so my advice to you is to be that person I have on um, my Twitter account be the change you want to see and that is kind of a quote that I really, really want to start living by because there's so much change in this world that I want to see, but it all has to start somewhere, right? And I know I can't change the whole world. You know, I'm not saying that by any means because I'm just little old me, but the little things that I can do to change even one person's life, that's my goal. I just want to bit by bit, little by little, um, do as much as I can to help others. And I encourage you to do the same. Next time you're at the grocery store, next time you're at the gym or wherever you're at and you see somebody that you normally wouldn't talk to, I, I advise you, maybe I encourage you to just go up to that person or strike up a conversation or give that person a hug or you know anything that you can do that God puts on your heart to help that person. You know, it doesn't always have to be financially. It can be just, you know, like I said, a high five or a hug or a smile. A smile can go a long way. Um, like I said, I've been watching a lot of Stephen Furnick at Elevation Church, and he is really, really encouraging me um, a lot these days in trying to, you know, change and be the change. And it always has to start somewhere. So um, I encourage you to to do that as well. And if we all start doing that little by little, then it all adds up, and there could probably be a huge change. So um, until next time, I hope y'all have a great week and stay safe.